family. Can you tell me more about your grandparents? Did they instill any values or what was important to them? Well, my grandmother is Juana Olguin, was Juana Olguin, <clears throat> and my grandfather was Antonio Gandara. And they came over during the revolution through uh, the civil unrest. And they instilled in me probably uh, a baseline of resiliency. They came in different forms. So they gave me the gift of two languages. I can't tell you what language I learned first, whether it was English or Spanish. Um, they gave me the gift of understanding that familia was important and that you did everything for them. Um, <clears throat> my, grand, my birth mother didn't want my brother and I. So she left probably when I was about three years old. And uh, my brother was about 18 months. And my grandmother, being the strong Mexicana Catolica, said, mi sangre no va rodando, and sent my aunt, mi tía Concha, who became my mother, um, to uh, get us in Florida, because we had been dumped in Florida uh, by, our, by our birth mother. So my grandmother put my uh, father on a plane. They bought him a suit, they put him on a plane, and they sent him to go and get us and bring us back because they did not want their sangre to be rodando, and they wanted to make sure that we were raised by family. So that was probably the biggest gift. They kept us out of the system. And for Latino families, I think that's really important, is we do our best to make sure que our sangre no ande rodando, que nuestros hijos tengan una base, and que conozcan a su familia y sus raíces. Do you have any other childhood memories that you recall or any incidents that really influenced you? Well, probably, I, it's funny because you relate things that happened to you as a child to what you're doing now, to kind of your career now. So a couple memories. Um, I think I became a translator or an interpreter at a very early age. Um, mi abuelita chiquita was my great grandmother and her name was Juana Chavez. Uh, she's very tiny. They said she was of indigenous descent, but she was very tiny. What I remember of her being malablada, which means she cusses, <laughs> smoking cigarettes, and she had one shot of tequila a day. Only one, porque it was para la sangre, para que le circule la sangre. Um, but my, because of my great-grandmother, when she would stay with us at my grandparents' house, um, she, I got to stay up late because I was the interpreter for Bonanza and Gunsmoke. And my abuelita chiquita would sit there, ¿Qué dice el chinito? ¿Y qué está haciendo esa señora? And I would interpret for her. So I learned how to interpret at a very early age. And I also learned the benefit. I got to stay up late because I could interpret for mi abuelita chiquita. <laughs> uh, since we lived in my grandparents' house, um, my grandmother, Juan Alguín, and my grandfather, Antonio Gandara, their house was like um, a mini UN. We, it was always open doors. We had familia coming from the US side or the Mexican side. So there was always someone staying there. And they were always your tios, your cousins, your abuelitos, but we always had people staying there. And it was just, echenle mas agua a los frijoles, ahí viene la tía Lupe, you know, those kinds of things. So those probably are the fondest memories that I have. Were there, did you have any mentors as you were maybe in your young um, adult years or that really influenced you also or helped you find your path? Well, um, after my grandparents died, and my grandparents died uh, when I was in the fourth grade, and I was put in a Catholic foster home for a little bit until my dad could kind of get himself on his feet. And that led to kind of what you would describe as a troubled childhood. Um, and basically, I was uh, callejera. I was on the street a lot. I lived uh, during my junior and senior year on the street. Um, but interestingly enough, no matter what, my tía Concha would always know where I was at. She would always come and look for me. She would always come and bring me food or bring me some clothes. So my aunt was that steady rock, you know, throughout my life, no matter what dysfunction was going on. 